The Coindesk Spotlight is brought to you by Nexo, the place to earn on Bitcoin, Ethereum, and more. Think about all that time you spend on social media. What if you could earn and be rewarded for all those hours you spent posting about your last vacation? Crypto social network Minds gamifies social media and rewards users with the Ethereum minted Minds token. Joining us now to discuss is CEO and founder of Minds, Bill Ottman. Welcome to the show, Bill. So first off, Perhaps you can explain to us how Minds works. I had a chance to sign up and I took a look at it. It kind of reminded me of Facebook. Yeah, thanks for having me. So Minds is an open source decentralized social network. And, you know, we just think that censorship resistance, decentralized infrastructure, rewards for creators, monetization, privacy, end-to-end -end encryption, sort of doing everything the opposite way that big tech is doing it. Um, you know, that that's where we need to go. And so, you know, we, we support Bitcoin and, and fiat as well and for rewards for creators, but also Ethereum and, and, uh, and our token. So it's creating incentive mechanisms for users to contribute, uh, develop code. Is, it's all about incentives and rewarding users, putting users first. Bill, you just did a round of fundraise, fundraising. Uh, what was the valuation on that? 70 post. Oh, and uh, where's your geographic base located? Like, like where, where are your users? So you have something like, what's it, 14 million users? Where, where are most of those people? Yeah, so we've got people, we had like half a million, million users joined from Thailand in response to some crackdowns from their government and somewhat of a revolving door with Twitter. We've seen similar waves from, from Vietnam, but our, our, the core of our user base in the US, UK, Canada, Australia. So I totally like the spirit of this, but you know, one of the big challenges for upstart social media platforms is just getting that network effect, right? That can compete with Facebook or Twitter. I mean, do you think like just over the long term, what's going to get more and more people or more mainstream people to leave these platforms where they already have a network and they're already comfortable to try something new? Absolutely. I think it's all about incentives, um, but we make it harder for ourselves to grow almost intentionally because we're not willing to spy on everybody in order to sort of create network effects in a dirty way. So, you know, it's, it's a long, slow, sustainable climb. Um, I think that, you know, at the, end, at the end of the day, though, people, while totally addicted to Twitter, Facebook, Google, um, you know, are bitter about how they're treating them. And so, you know, ultimately, in sort of the, the, the steady growth of, of crypto in general, I think that crypto will eat social media. It's, it's, it's going to eat every industry. So, Bill, uh, copyright protection is a big issue for a lot of social media now. Uh, it, YouTube uh, also has issues with it. What are you guys doing to protect content creators who has, have their stuff pirated on, on your uh, censorship-resistant uh, site? Sure. So we're hybrid infrastructure in that users have the option to post to in, in, immutable systems so you know they can delete by default you actually have to sp when you post you have to specifically decide to post to uh the perma web so we have an integration with our weave which is a decentralized content storage system but that's optional and we make it very clear to people that you know you better know what you're getting into with with immutable content but if, they, if someone posts a video, if someone posts a video that's that's copyright, and and they it's immutable, how do you get it off the the system well, we, when their lawyers call you? Sure. So Arweave has a system where their nodes can essentially choose to ignore and forget about various content that gets reported. But um, so yeah, there. I mean. There are definitely copyright issues when it comes to blockchains. We've, uh, we've been able to navigate it because, you know, we also do have central servers that where, where we can delete content from. But I mean, just look at the NFT space. It's, it's like sort of like a, it's copyright chaos. And um, it's, it's something that we have to deal with as, as we move into this new space. So are you saying with this network, we wouldn't see what happened to say 
uh, President Trump, when he, former President Trump, when the Capitol riots happened and Twitter basically shut down his Twitter account later on, that wouldn't happen on this network. It would be immutable, decentralized. And I am also curious, how do users earn exactly? Are users giving each other money for, for the engagement, for the posts that they write, or is the network, does it have a fund and then it rewards users that way? Sure. So yeah, on the, on the censorship stuff, um, we have a First Amendment-based content policy, which is a major differentiator from most big tech networks. No one really knows what their policy is. They seem to sort of randomly make decisions, and it's sort of a mess. And, you know, we saw recently, uh, just this week, that the Biden administration is apparently talking behind the scenes with uh, major social networks on what content to cater take down and what they deem misinformation. Obviously, misinformation is a huge problem and we have to deal with it, but there are probably more intelligent ways through different consensus mechanisms and decentralized trust and reputation that could solve this. So, um, and then in terms of the reward system, so yeah, we, uh, all of our tokens are, we have 10,000 that are emitted daily in three buckets, engagement rewards, holding rewards, and liquidity rewards. And so users can earn through, you know, posting uh, and contributing popular content or just holding or providing liquidity into Uniswap. So we have a, a direct uh, integration with, with Uniswap. Bill, how, how many employees do you have right now? About 15. So, okay. A lot of work. <laughs> but, but, but put it this way. So, you know, scaling uh, in the open source world in terms of contributors is, is easier than in the proprietary world. And, you know, look, I mean, Instagram only had uh, a dozen employees when, when Facebook bought them. Obviously, we will never sell to Facebook, but you can scale a social network with a relatively small team and, you know, the power of the open source community.